Welcome everybody to the Olympia Bob Run at Eagles just outside the city of Innsbruck in Austria. Twice the venue for the Winter Olympic Games in 1964, all artificial tracks in 1976 for the first time in history, a combined track for luge and skeleton. And it's there that we find ourselves today for the penultimate Beastman World Cup race in women's skeleton. I'm Martin Haven and alongside me, John Morgan. And John, this is more than just a World Cup race. This track will be the venue for the final deciding playout for the Olympic selections. A lot of athletes have a lot on the line to qualify through the Olympic platform to march at this Sochi Olympic Games. Start record, Sarah Sidney. That's because things have changed on the track. The bottom of the track, top of the track up here is very quiet. You have is not a lot of velocity up here. It's not very steep, so all your mistakes are made up here, curves three, four, five. This track, the first artificial track used for a Winter Olympic Games, the first combination for Bob and Luge and Skeleton. 76, the famous curve is Kreisel. And like in a lot of the Kreisels, you need a slingshot effect on the bottom to really the pivotal part of the track. Right here, curve nine. This is where the speeds accelerate. Curve 10, a lot of Gs. Now a three-corner combination, the Labyrinths down here, 11, 12, and 13. Really challenge the athletes here, up near 80 miles an hour. Into the finish, you go uphill. You see the finish line right here into the finish. And the uh, Rose McGrandall season track record from Great Britain. Very tough to stop here on this track too quickly. Yes, it is. You have to break in a corner. Lizzie Arnold from Great Britain and Shelley Rudman, her teammate, lie first and third in the World Cup rankings with two races left to go ahead of Noel Piker's pace of the USA. Janine Flock of Austria, what a standout season that young lady is having. Her first World Cup podium in Lake Placid. She lies fourth in the overall rankings. Well, in the news today, there will be no Canadian sliders. Coach Duff Gibson has pulled the entries for Melissa Hollingsworth, Sarah Reed, and Robin Thompson. The men, as I understand it, will slide in their race at this weekend, but then all the Canadians will head home for a two-week training camp back in Calgary. There's Noel Piker's pace. Podium last year in the silver medal position in the World Cup race on this track. And the last two races, John Ball, going to be won by Russian sliders. Olga Potilichna, her World Cup debut, won here two seasons ago. Yelena Nikitina won the European Championship with victory here last year. So the Russians have got form, and there is Janine Flock looking so relaxed this year. And Martin Rettel, part of the reason for that, we'll talk about that in a moment. She leads the start list. She will be first off from Lizzie Yarnell to Great Britain. Then Melissa Hollingsworth has withdrawn, so Sarah Reed. So we are with a 24 sled field. That means that four will go home because only the fastest 20 go into the second run. The, slide, the times from both runs for every slide accounts towards their victory total. 21 sleds in the field now with the three Canadians pull out, so only one will go home. Janine Flock, big pressure on her on her home track, and what a three events she's had. Her last three results, second, fifth, and fourth. And boy, could she ever do herself justice by winning on this track today. Decent athlete at the 50 meters, but her ability, oh, she was little. I thought sloppy in that first curve. Her, her riding down the track, I think, has a lot to do with Coach Martin Rennick, silver medalist for the 2002 games in Salt Lake City. The other thing he's done is stop her fiddling with the sled. She spent the last three years constantly changing the setup, and he said, no, we need to change you and not the sled. He's banned her from changing the sled, and that has transformed her as a slider. This is the most successful female athlete in women's skeleton in Austria. They have three sports in Austria in the winter, skiing, skiing, and skiing. And Austrians, men used to dominate the sport in the 80s and 90s, multiple world champions. If you look back at skeleton history, and this would be a big moment for her to a lot of Austrian media around for her to come down and medal. She should medal, but to win the event, 
what a moment it would be for women's Austrian skeleton race. And that would be very popular as well among her peers. I don't think there's anybody in the women's skeleton world that would uh, disallow her a win. Start, look at these beautiful pictures. Watch the athleticism get on. Watch her eyes start to look down the track. Look at her right now, she's on. Now I gotta pick out my spot on the first curve. Now here at the exit of nine, pivotal part of the track. Looks like she's a little late and a skid across the ice. I don't think she'll be the last athlete to do this, but she corrected very well. How fast is her time? We're not gonna know until the next sled comes down and the next sled down is pretty formidable. Yeah. Lizzie Arnold of Great Britain, our World Cup leader. She has scored three race wins so far this season. Second last week in Samaritz in Switzerland. Yeah, she's not been off the podium yet. The three wins were followed up by a two seconds and a third. And start, she gets a decent start. She beats Flock at the start. And she just is a great glider. And Noelle Pike's pace coming up to me. Her and Noelle Pike's pace are mirrors of each other. You know, where Janine Flock's thinner, smaller, more like a track and field athlete. And look at this. Flock's already got a 200 advantage with a lesser start time. Now it's up to three. Look at the clocks. Not much between them in age. Janine Flock still 24. Lizzie just turned 25. She's two hundredths of a second behind. This is one blink of an eye of difference. That's a great the exit there. She's the green now. That was the difference there, Martin. That exit of nine was much better than Janine Flocks. And now she starts to fly in the bottom part of the track. 119 kilometers, almost 75 miles an hour. Could be a this couple be of tenths in front. It is very nearly two tenths. 54, 63. Coach Andy Schmidt there looking happy with that. The World Cup leader, and for good reason. The exit of nine there was a lot better than Janine Flock in this Janine Flock's home track. But the perfect lines on the exit of curve nine. Big speed at the bottom. Here it is. Now watch her come across. Now remember, Flock was sliding. There's no sliding here. This is a straight bullet. Barely a tap. Now she's perfectly set up for 10. Speed part of the track. She was almost a kilometer and a half better on the bottom here, which is why she picked up 17 hundredths of a second from curve nine down. Lizzie Arnold of Great Britain, our leader of the first of the two heats that they will complete here. And next up is Olga Potilitsina, her World Cup debut two seasons ago, first race out. She took a gold that she has yet to be able to repeat. Is this a track that could bring her luck? Last four events, 17, 4, 8, and 8. So her best finish, fourth place in Lake Placid. She missed the first two events. In the Russians are shuffling athletes in and out of the lineup. Lee Schneider built this sled. He's the former German world champion in skeleton. Competed in the 2002 games for Germany. Coached multiple teams, built sled. The Russians got a hold of him a couple years ago. Russian men are really good, but the Russian women have been making some statements the last couple of years, especially on this Eagles track. One thing the Potolitsina doesn't have in her armory is a really electrifying start, and John, that's always going to cost her. This is such a short track, and the speed of the start is really going to be vital. Exit of this curve is going to be really important. Good exit. That's unbelievable. 98.6, so she's not, she's not at the speed. She's a half kilometer down, 74.1 miles an hour. Could be good. Now, this is close for second. Yeah, third. Third place, three tenths of a second back. And I don't think that was that bad a run for the athlete who won this event two years ago. Nicotina, her teammate, comes up. Later, she won the event last year. No speed in the bottom. You know, we, we talk about the exit of nine. You know, Mark, we talk about the start. The start here is so crucial. It's so important to have a great start on this track. This is probably, this track is more of a start emphasis than any track of the circuit. These lines look bumpy there. Now here's curve nine. Now she doesn't slide, there she's sliding there. Yeah, steering hard to bring it off and avoid the tap on her left. Down the wrong side of that straightaway, which resulted in not very good speed. 
Noel Pikers Pace hyphenated sliders have taken the silver medal in the last two years here. Noel Pikers Pace last year, Emma Lincoln Smith the year before. Can Noel Pikers Pace claim win number four of her season? She was second here last year by 27 hundreds, and in fact, it cost her the triple trophy because she won on to win Sochi. She won the previous event, Koenigsee. And she's the only person eligible in the field to win the triple trophy. And the only way she can maintain her eligibility is to win this heat right now. And she's 1,400 down to Lizzie Arnold. And that's going to be a lot to overcome. She's one of the tallest athletes in the field. She's got a lot of body mass as well, which is good because she's pushing a lighter sled, but she knows that's her start again. Is something she has to fight back for. She can't bleed any more time. Down 1800, she's got to keep it within. Yeah, there here she comes. 87.3. That's the better speed by half a kilometer than Yarnold. Now into nine. Watch this straight line out of nine. She's got it down to seven. If she comes straight, she'll do it. I don't know how straight that is. Top speed. 99.6, half kilometer better than the field. Here she comes, 119.4. Lizzie was 119.8. She will hold on to the lead, but Noel is running a very close. Unless she can take it in the line. So that knocks her out of the triple oh. trophy. Yep, that is the chance to win maybe as much as 100,000 euro gone west for Noel Piker's pace. This year it's not enough to win the three rounds. You've got to have the fastest six heats as well. But she still put herself in position. She only 900 down at the start. 14 down at the start, nine at the bottom. And she was not smooth in the exit of nine. Here it is. Remember, Yarnell came right across the right side of our screen. No skidding look at the skidding here that was it she had the big speed coming in there she had it down to five hundreds so she was going to take the lead if she had look at that her, her sideways off her sled well, this will be noel's last race here this year but her daughter slid down the track yesterday that's just three days shy of her sixth birthday we saw an eight-year-old as yeah. the forerunner Wow. Marina Giardoni of Switzerland now. And uh, we've been saying that this girl has got so much to offer. Former break woman, so you know she's got a big, powerful physique. With a coach like Mickey Grunberger, who's done so much for British Skeleton over the years, she has got the opportunity to become the next Maya Pedersen, who was Switzerland's legendary woman slider in Skeleton. She will rip up the start track here. Could even challenge the start record. She does. Oh, fantastic. And she, her best finish of the year, fifth in Lake Placid, which is strange. She finished 12th on her home track in San Moritz. And Lake Placid isn't known as an easy track. So, with that type of start, look at she's got a quarter of a second lead. Great speed as well in the first corner, comfortably quicker than anybody else. She's fast and she's got body mass on her side. 86 3. She's losing time though. Yeah. Two tenths of a kilometer down, and there's not a good exit of the Chrysler. Down to 14. Now, can she hold up? How straight can she be here? Not bad at all. Not bad. 96 2. It's not great speed. In fact, that's not very good speed at all. 116. Three and a half kilometers an hour down on the fastest. 3.8 down on Lizzie Arnold. She's going to go about half a second back. 55-12. Well, John, she's Switzerland's Alexander Tretiakov. She's got game. She just needs to control that speed. And that takes time. Yeah, well, she lost. She was three kilometers off of Yarnold, Pika's pace. But this is the where. She does it all. The first 50 meters of the start. Watch her athletically hop on this. Look at that, Bose. She is, no doubt, a great athlete. And when she figures out how to drive, look at the exit of Kreisel. She comes up too high, crosses over to the right side. Look at her head come up to steer, turn. She lost a lot of speed starting right there. Already eighth in the World Cup with best result fifth in Lake Placid. Next up is Marion Tees of Germany. And the Germans need some big results for their women's skeleton sliders to guarantee that they'll be selected for the games. She has got three top six finishes. Anya Huber has got three, has got only two so far, so she needs a big one here. Marion Tees, well, John, she's going to lack at the start, but she needs to find pace down the track. Well, lacking at the start is an understatement, but she did get fourth place in Winterberg. And Winterberg has a similar personality 
of the Eagles track. Short, 1,300 meters. Look at him try and get over in that first group. She's, you know, three tenths down. It's going to grow. The next clock probably the 42 or 4,300 is down. Boy, is that something that's some albatross to come here. 5,200 is down. So if she keeps it at 45 or 50 at the next clock, she could get into the top three because she is a speed runner. Well, she's already further behind the leader before the Kreisel than our slowest slider was at the bottom so far. Right. The, the, the absolutely perfect line here. The yards. It's true there. Speed Ten four is decent speed. We've seen 99 from the other. 192, that's great. Very good speed. She's going to run out of track, 74.1. Same as Pike is pace, sixth in the field. And you say if you're 30 hunters behind at the start, you're 90 hunters behind at the bottom. Not much more you can do it. Boy, very disappointing for Mary T. Last week, in a place you thought she could do good in the track, and St. Moritz, 15. You would expect her to have the perfect line. Look at her start to dive out. Look at her feet. Well, I mean, she's on the perfect line, but now on the right side of our screen, she, she might have come out too early. There's the skin. Might have come out just a hair too early. Two-time world champion Marion Thies lies in sixth position. Former European champion Shelley Rudman won the title on this track in 2010. And last year's world champion, previous season's World Cup champion. What a rare vein of form she's having. Richard Bromley holding the sled. I've got to have a word with you, Haven, he said just at the top a little earlier. He said, Kristen does not build this. I know that. We just don't have time to go into all the details. It's Richard Bromley that builds these Bromley Tech sleds. An older set of the Adidas stunt shoes, look like. Brand new, they probably bought 10 pair at one time. She's 1,500 stout, she's well-known speed merchant. That, look at the feet of the present world champion in the sport from St. Moritz in 2013. 2,100 stout, if she stops the bleeding, she has a chance to challenge for a podium spot. Well, since she won that European Championship gold medal, she's had an 11th and two fifth places in the last three seasons here. So it's kind of been a happy hunting ground, but not recently enough. For the second round. Perfect line. Little bit. Not bad, not speed. Now, she's going to be 119 kilometers speed if she has a great time. That's not going to be enough to move around. She might get in the top four. Sixth position on splits. Let's see where she is. Fifth at the line ahead of Marina Giardoni by five hundredths of a second, seven hundredths of a second. Off a, off a start where she gave away a quarter of a second. Yeah, very surprised at her start. She's usually a better starter than that. But of course, she's only a hundredth off of Pike's pace, but she's way down to it. Janine Flock. Look at the exit here. Look at her feet come apart. You know, that's the exit of nine. Obviously, not comfortable. She got it back together there. Look at the feet. Look at the form here. A little high. Watch the hit, too. The, right at the finish line. Bang. Well, she needs some rest, I think. She's still recovering from uh, food poisoning and flu and all sorts of illnesses during the course of the season, trying to find the fitness, trying to find the strength and speed in those legs to go to the Games in Sochi and challenge for another Olympic medal. Anja Huber of Germany, our bronze medalist in last year's World Championship, uh, beg your pardon, in the year before's World Championships, and a former world champion herself, and a veteran of women's skeleton, over 70 World Cup races. She's lost count now, she says, of how many she started. Somebody somewhere will know. Her last three starts, 13th in St. Moritz, 13th in Winterberg, 14th in one of the two races in Lake Placid, and the other race in Lake Placid, she finished second, her only podium of the season. For it's a like girl who's won all these events, this is, needless to say, a very, very perplexing start. And you think by now, only a couple of weeks out to Sochi, that she would be, you know, 
doing, it, doing better. The, the last two weeks, very surprising last week at St. Moritz, that perfect. It, it's like they locked the real Anya Huber in a closet somewhere, and uh, this is the evil imposter, but she still looks so happy and relaxed to be at the track all the time. Yeah, she knows something we don't. Long skin, 98.3 is not great speed, and she will have lost a degree of that as well. Seventh place on split time. She's behind okay. Marina Giardoni by two hundredths of a second. You would have told me that Anya Huber would not be in front of Giardoni from Switzerland for the race that would have taken that bet. Just don't understand it. This was an athlete who dominated the sport just a couple years ago. Well, yeah. Only fifth quickest at the start tells us part of the yeah, problem. She slipped a little bit here. Look at that right there. It, Boy, look at her left, look at that, way outside the left. That's your right toe hit the sled. And look, look at her start time, Mark. I mean, that's the fifth best start. She, this is one of the best starters in the world. She dominated the sport with her start a couple of seasons ago. No quicker than Noel Piker's pace is no reflection on Noel's pace, but she would expect more. Next up, Germany's Sophia Griebel now with uh, Marion Tiss at 29 and Anya Huber at 30. Sophia is the coming generation, or at least the green shoots of it. Just 23 years old from the Altenburg uh, track. Big bump from the Oberhof track. So another Eastern German fast sprinting starter. I mean, she's the youngest of the Germans and the least experienced. And I'm sure she surprised herself that the last couple of races she's had the best finishes. Two World Cup races this year, sixth place in Winterberg, tenth place in Samaritz. Yeah, the last two races, she was the best German. Well, not the quickest of starts we've seen from a 5.60 was slower than Anya Huber, but the speed is pretty good, 86.1. This could put a, a, a top 10 at the end of the first heat. The exit, a pivotal part of the track, a little skid. 97.5 is two kilometers down. Get a top slide and she will fall back more. Not a good run for moving into the top three right here. This will be the slowest of our runs, 700 slower than Marion Tees. 55-42 slide leaves the Germans 7th, 8th and 9th of 9 sleds so far. Just in another of the sentences you don't expect to say. Well, this is, this is scouting. They're good at this. Look at the form. Perfect form in 10. Head down. The feet bouncing a little bit. Now she eyes up to curve 11, 12, and 13, crosses over to get on the take on where she wants to get on. Look at her feet coming up, though. She wasn't happy with that. That's why she made that adjustment. Staring hard with the right knee as the left leg comes up to twist the frame of the sled. I'm gonna go weigher. Athlete and sled both ways. See the runners, not straight, not flat, like an ice skate, not square edged either. They're round, tubular runners. And they are like a rocking chair, just a small contact patch. This is Maria Oliver of Russia, really coming on strong towards the end of this season. Seventh last weekend in Samaritz, her best result of the season. She could be a big factor. She's got mental strength that the others may not yet possess. 5.43, joint fastest start. Uh, joint second fastest with leader Lizzie Arnold. That start time, she challenged the track. Great top speed out of curve two. Only a hundredth behind. And remember, Arnold was perfect in the bottom part of the track. And all of us, another tall athlete with lots of body mass, 5'7", 160 pounds, 70 plus kilos, all big steer there to get the line right. This is a good run. A little wild on the exit of nine, and that might have undone her chance yeah. to take the lead. Speed is gone. She had it going until eight, and then at the exit of nine, lost it. Now she's calm her down. She's still to get to five. So she is 600s behind teammate Olga Botilitsina and 500s ahead of Shelly Rodman. That's the fourth, fifth, and sixth. But they are in a different group to the top three who are covered by 1700s of a second. She won't be happy with that slide. 
There's the curve in question. She almost falls off. She came down too early, and then centrifugal force pushed her right back up the wall. She's struggling, and with that, bang, and then watch the energy come the other direction, and she corrected well, but lost a kilometer of speed at least on that exit of curve nine, the pivotal part of the track. So 10 of our 21 sleds are down here in Eagles in Austria, just outside the Olympic city of Innsbruck as the evening sunset lights up the mountains around us. We have much more still to come. Well, John, the Russians and the Germans, you expect to be the dominant forces in ice sliding, but at the moment, the Germans are struggling and the Russians really don't seem to quite have hit their stride. Of course, winning a World Cup race in Austria is as of nothing for the Russians. There's only one race that they and anyone else is interested in this year, and that is happening in Russia. Well, the Russians are still sitting fourth and fifth, and there's still a Russian to come up named Nikitina, who yep. won this event last year. So I would think she could shake up that top three if she does, does what she did last year. And then I don't see really any. Hey, Katie Ulander's had a lot of success on this track. Michelle Steele's had a lot of success on this track. And you know, the, it's getting going to get colder, Martin. Yeah. Look at the sky. The sun's gone behind the clouds. And so very warm the conditions here. I can see that the. Well, Yelena Nikitina just biding her time. She will have known that this two-minute halt for network commercials was coming and will have timed her warm-up so that, like everybody else, she arrives at the block ready to go. And Yelena Nikitina, well, she is the big hope for Russia's future, definitely. Even if Potulitsina and Oliver continue, Nikitina, you sense, will be the one who's going to carry it all the way. She's our reigning European champion. She's only just turned 21 last week. So this Moscow athlete who made her World Cup debut in Winterberg last season, she had four World Cup races last year, including that win here in Eagles that gained her the European Championship. And at 20 years old, that was a prodigious debut. Elena Nikitina of Russia getting ready to start her first run of two here in Eagles in Austria. The reigning European champion, last year's winner on this track. I don't know if she's going to challenge the start record, but I bet you she comes out here with the second best start. Second best start. Yeah. 526. Just a hundredth away from the start record. That was set by the Swiss athlete. And that puts her nearly two tenths in front of Lizzie Yarnold, our current race leader. She's in the green, Nikitina, three tenths up. That's that start momentum. Looks like a little skid there in the three, four. But she's got such a huge lead, and it should have been more than that, and the speed isn't that good. No, speed's not good at all. good at all, and she bumps on the exit of Kreisel, and it's down. She's going to need perfect lines down here on the exit of nine. Oh, long skid, tries to correct it, 97 kilometers an hour. kilometers down on the top sleds. Now can she hold on to the top three positions? She should be in the third position at least. 1700s covers the top three. Will she be in or out? She's fourth place, 1900s back. Now she's making a race of it. Third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. But Nikitina is the only one in with a shot. She's 1900s back. Motilitsina, 3100s. Oliver, 3700s. And she's got a huge advantage in all three sleds in front of her with her start time. Yeah. Her drive down the track wasn't very good. She knows it. She's kicking herself with that exit of corner nine, John. It is nine. the key corner. Well, I think she had some problems up in the top of the track, too. But here, watch her come into the curve top of the track. This is up top where you have to be perfect. I think she struggled up here. This is on the way top above Chrysler. Look at the drift here. See, she's drifting over. She should be over on the other side of the wall to get on the take on. Now she has to cross over. She lost all that speed she had up top as she went into Chrysler. Right, still in her first four years of sliding. So Sochi is going to be a huge day for her. Catherine Eustace of New Zealand now. And the Kiwi, 37 years old, is our oldest slider in the field. 
and still one of the quickest, now 38 years old, in fact, this physiotherapist from Wanaka in New Zealand, South Island. Go, 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 go. Not, look at the way she got on the sled. You saw some of the other athletes that power step, they fly their whole body in the sled, and their chest is like the first thing that hits. Her knee hit as she got on the sled. Such an awkward thing to do. You're running yeah. downhill so on easy for us to ties. Uh, this, absolutely. Huh? So easy to sit here and criticize them how they do it. And, and, you know, she might have had a slip there, but that didn't look like a great entry onto the sled. But she still had the sixth best start. And the new young Kiwi generation last week, they were in the Europa Cup training for Samaritz races this week. This isn't bad if she's clean. This is good. She's in eighth place. Not bad. Speed, though. Good to kilometers down. Boy, this is attractive. Track just got slow. But her speed is better than girls who started a quarter of a second faster than her. So she has still got great driving skills. 55-11 for eighth place. Beat all three German sleds. Beat the start record holder, Marina Giadoni, who started in a 5.25 to her 5.51. So she gave away a quarter of a second to Giadoni on the start and was a hundredth quicker at the bottom. Watch the way she enters the sled here. Most athletes come on there, they just stretch out big time. Look at that, her knee hits the sled. See that? Yeah, you see I, your I think she had body. lost her balance I think she just as she went over the there, crest of the hill. And then look at her feet are apart here. Look at the space as you... We sit there and criticize these athletes, and then, we, you know, here they are, 75 miles an hour. Look at her eyes. Look at her look at that. She's not looking 20 feet in front of her. She's looking 100 feet in front of her. Uh, male counterpart Ben Sanford knocked himself out in the race in uh, Samaritz the other day, so I'm not sure yet whether we'll see him he, racing. He's been cleared to slide. He has, he has been, been cleared, cleared, which is good news. Lucy Chaffer of Australia. I mentioned Emma Lincoln-Smith taking the silver medal here a couple of years ago for the Aussies. But uh, Lucy and her teammate Michelle Steele not having the greatest of seasons this year. Maybe they're trying to set their sights on peaking in February. Ooh, oh, like got away with that. Got away with that. Yeah, she jumped over a real heavy right to left. Caused the sled almost to come out of the groove. Good start. Not bad. Six best start. Speed. Half a kilometer down. And now, no mistakes allowed up here where it is flat. And you need to let yourself accelerate. There's the wrong side coming out of five, six, seven. This is the big Chrysler curve. Speed's not bad. Dropping down out of the top ten, though. She could be perfect here. That's a good run. How much was she steering? 97.4. I don't think the track's got any more speed left. It. The sled down looks good, but there's just no speed in the track. 64, hundreds off the pace, coach Eric Bernardes, who used to do very well on this track as an American slider. Caleb Smith, another ex-US slider, is here as well. He's been coaching the Intercontinental Cup sliding Australian girls. He's just arrived from Park City, Utah. Start. All the Australians, good technique. But watch her, watch her jump over the sled. Oh, she, she tripped there too. Yeah. She, no power step. And she Someone else in. is going to come up. She's yeah. going to show us the power step that I talk about. Teacher. Sorry. Teacher from Perth in Western Australia. And next up, Katie Ulender. Like Noel Pike is based former World Cup champion. And uh, Katie, like Noel. Finding her pace towards the end of the season when you need it most. Sixth place in San Moritz last week. Her best result of the season. It's a great view of those needle spikes they need to stay upright even on the sheet ice. Katie is. Watch her step. She, she, she had a low power step, but she did not stumble getting on that sled like the two previous sleds. Start time, 10 hundredths off the pace. That's not her style. She usually has a better start than that, but Katie also missed a couple of races with some concussion syndrome. Yeah. She's just coming back into form and finished second on the track in Sochi to her teammate, 
blew up Pika's pace last year at the pre-Olympic test. She's won on this track before. And, oh! So we're working hard to avoid the wall there. It didn't work. Yeah, she's got some out of control stuff right here, too. With the foot coming all the way out. Two kilometers down to Elizabeth Arnold. Now, as it is, can she stay in the top ten? Looks like her sled is set up to be pretty wild, and that means fast, but hard to control, 55-22. So just 500s quicker than Lucy Chaffer, who just came down. 800s behind Anya Huber, but she splits the German girls. Well, the Exeter Kreisel didn't help her efforts. Yeah, what do I do wrong? Well, here's Kreisel, she comes down. Goes back up, centrifugal force, and gets over on the wrong side. Comes over, hits that wall. You gotta come out of there clean. And look how high she got there. That's her style with her legs far apart, but here on the exit of nine, watch her right, her left foot, our right side, almost come to the wall. Look at that. That's at 70 miles an hour. Yeah. Looking for that big steer to straighten up the slide. Zach Lund, the coach with her, former, another former US slider, Katie. Got to think about that one before the second and final heat. Now, Michelle Steele of Australia, the only woman in the field who still pushes the old style like a wheelbarrow with one hand on either handle. And this is uh, the way she chooses to go. She likes it for safety. Now, will it give her a better load over the brow here in Eagles? There's the two hands. Watch her step. Head come up. See that little... To extend it almost. Raise your chin up in the air, have that power step get on the sled. 534, yeah, that's very start. quick. She didn't seem to have the speed last week in Samaritz. I don't know quite what was going on. She's got a decent lead, 3 to 16. If she gets it up to 20, should we have something to talk about? No, she's lost it. 9 is the fastest speed of Lizzie Arnold, our leader at that stage. She needs to be 99 kilometers an hour. Foot out of the excellent oh. prize line. Here, pivotal part of the track. And this little diminutive slider from Australia is not Seven bad. Days. She's not two speed. kilometers and a half down the track. Doesn't have any of the left. But she could still slide into the top seven here. Fifth place at the last split, seventh at the line. Great prediction work again, 55-05. There's Caleb Smith on the left of your shot, the second of the Aussie coaches. That wasn't that bad of a run. She little, little foot came out on the exit of Chrysler. Great start. She's done well on this track before. But I think the, the track is just slowed down. You might well be right. Look at the head up here. Look at her eyes, looking for the take on. She controls that well now into the exit of nine. That's seven, eight, here's nine. And look at her eyes. Yeah. She's looking for that magic spot on curve 10 that she's got to hit perfectly. Watch her head come up here. Oh, that's a that big bump. old thump in the track there. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of the expansion joints in the concrete, which are never flat. I certainly feel that at 75 miles an hour. Rose McGrand of Great Britain, our track record holder, set it in December 2013, last year's Intercontinental Cup race weekend. Another one of those British athletes. You know, in Germany, we keep talking. That's not good there, though. Ooh, big scared. That's going to cost him. Clock on the left, 47.5. She should be up near 48.6, especially with that start time. Now she's relegated to... If she's perfect all the way down the track, she could finish in the top eight because of that mistake. 28th birthday is a 27th birthday is a week today so she'll be in Koenigsegg Bavaria for that oh and a big hit on the inside wall won't help three tenths back this is a bit of a wild ride from Rose I wonder if this was her type of ride in the ICC when she set the track record it's late still top eight or so 15 
Mahomes that way off there. Wow. What happened? The speed. Look at the speed. 100, you know, she's 73 miles an hour. 170. All of the sleds are two kilometers down. And yeah. the bottom part of this track, there's just nothing left for speed. Well, if you get nine wrong, it's wrong all the way through the labyrinth. Here's the Chrysler where she comes off too early. Watch her beautiful pictures. Look at her form. She's very nice at her form, but she steers out too early. Bang. And that causes you to interrupt your slingshot effect on the bottom part of the track. Here's another view of it. Watch her go over to the right side of our screen. And bang. And then she's got to collect herself and come across the ice. Look how much the artificial light is affecting our sliders. 15 are down. Lizzie Yarnell leads from Noah Pikes, Spacey Neenflok and Yelena Nikitina. The second pursuing pack headed by Olga Potilitsina. Lauda Prejelena of Latvia is next, one of the smaller athletes in the field. Five foot four, 59 kilos, ringing wet, just 20 years old, and so much potential perhaps for the Latvian program from this young lady. I asked her what it was like to be a Latvian female slider with all the attention the Dukas brothers gets, and she says, well, that's why I'm here. You know, and, and what a what a couple of teachers those guys are. Of course, their father, Dennis Dukars, just put the sled down for her at the top of the track. It's all in the family from Latvia, who won the four-man race in St. Moritz last week and had first and second in both men's skeleton races. Pretty good weekend for Latvia. Yeah, no kidding. Sunday in San Moritz was Latvia Day, wasn't it? Definitely. Normally we're there for Australia Day, but it was uh, unofficial Latvia Day last week. It was sit there and listen to all those Latvians in attendance in San Moritz to sing their, watch them sing their national anthem. What great pride they have in their sliding sports programs. And they're also pretty good in luge. Speed is hemorrhaging away here. So many skids and mistakes. This is a young athlete that's a work in progress. It's only her second World Cup season, John, her first full year on the trail, so she's got lots more to learn. And she'll learn every day. Every day she comes to the track, big smile on her face. Of course, if I had the Dukars brothers teaching me too, I think I'd be smiling all day. I think it's too late for us. <laughs> it's just too late. Can't teach old dogs like us new tricks. Not bad lines. Her head's way up there in the exit. So easy for me to say that. Skids down most of 9 to 10. Down here in the labyrinth, a little late there. She wants to be on that curve a little early. That's why that leg came up in the air, try to steer herself off. Well, Lelja is in 17th place of our 17 sliders so far. Another Bromley Tech sled. This is Nozomi Kumuro of Japan. And with the withdrawal of the three Canadian athletes, a uh, slight dodging of the bullet by everybody with start numbers 21, 2, 3, and 4. One of them won't get a second slide, but you imagine that both the Japanese girls should be in the second heat. She did not compete in Winterberg or St. Moritz. I bet you she was down hanging out on the Europa Cup tour. Yep, earning more points. While trying to earn more points, and not everybody does it successfully. But, you know, she's had a... 20th, 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 18th, 19th. Yeah. Not, not uh, a top 15 season like the men are having. Kamara still just 28 years old. I, I was wrong. She was in St. Moritz last week, did not make the cut. She finished 22nd. Yeah. So I was wrong. And we did it. So she has been on the circuit the whole season. And really feet out there. The exit curves down here, boy, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Then you're flying at 70. She's going 71.4 miles an hour down here. And we're saying that that is slow in comparison to our leaders. I mean, that's With your chin, yeah. you're six inches off the ice and a couple Gs. Sure, as we see the sled fly by us at about 40 miles an hour. I think I, I need a couple of G and T's to do that speed yeah. down the yeah. ice, never mind a couple of G's. <laughs> Zami Kamura then in 18 spots, 500s behind Lauda Priyachalena. Look at the dive there on that, and then the you come out of the curve early like that, centrifugal force brings you back up like you're in the X of nine, and, but 
She may do with that pretty good, the foot, little foot tap. Such different conditions. Last week in San Marit, a natural track, totally different sound and feel. This week, racing into the dark with artificial light glaring off the ice. These women really have to adapt to everything. Next up is Aoka Nakayama from Nagano in Japan. Got interested in skeleton after the 98 Winter Games. She was then and is still at 43 years old, a journalist as well as a slider. Twentieth last week in Samaritz. Start. Very good. Speed on the left is the barometer that you can really make some predictions of. 47 kilometers there. She's going to be 1,500 down this next lot. There it is. And if you do your math, it's probably going to be 65, probably 6,800 down the next clock. And then maybe she'll stop the bleeding. 71. He's off by three. Now she has a chance to keep it around. 70. Not, not with that tap. 92. She'll probably be our first athlete that is, no, no, our third athlete to be more than a second down at the bottom. 19th place off an 18th fastest start. I think that is going to be her lot at the bottom of the track. 1.15.4, a fraction quicker than the last two sliders. So using her experience there to find speed at the bottom. Still, though, in 19th place, 1.8 seconds adrift of the leader. Well, when you have this type of start time, she did 18th best start. And she's in 19th place. Start has a lot to do with that yeah. on this track. The Kreisel, the big 360-degree whip around where you exit the curve underneath where you get on the take-on. This was one of the first ones ever built. Look at that skid out of nine, and here we go, or out of Kreisel, here we go again. She comes back up, and a lot of teams, a lot of athletes have had that line come out of Kreisel, bang that wall, they race all your time. 19 sliders down and two more to go, only one more place in the race. Will one of these women be the unlucky one? Joska Lacan to the Netherlands. She is our 20th slider, 26-year-old athlete. Another Bromley Tech sled. In her formative years, lots of coaching from Mickey Grunberger, now from Andy Schmidt. She's using a Huber sled. Not a bad start. And I don't know what her standards are to qualify according to Dutch Olympic Committee standards. But I bet you she has to have a good finish here to get named for that Olympic program because the Dutch standards, as we know from the bobsled world, are pretty strict. She has had one top 20 finish this season. In bobsled, they made three top eights. I'm quite sure what the Dutch Olympic Committee is think for skeleton. Yeah, 15th right now. Well, not bad speed. For ninth best start, 18th place, dropping into the danger zone with Kimura and Nakayama of Japan. She needs to finish inside 184. She does. She does. So it is She's Nakayama in who is okay. in the danger zone. Joska Lacan in 17th place, 100th ahead of Lelda Priyajelena of Latvia. So 20 sleds down, all in the race, unless we hear otherwise from Tech after the first heat. Exit of Kreisel, and guess what? She hits our right-hand wall, her left, like a lot of people. And then here, look at the, her feet here. This is the exit of nine, and she's scrambling there to get off that curve. Big skid in the middle of nine. You saw her legs move up the track that dropped her line down, and then she got thrown back up again by that centrifugal force. Well, I think a few of these athletes have got a very wild setup on their sled. See the temperature really dropping now. Maria Mazilu of Romania, our last slider on the ice in this first heat. 22-year-old student. And again, relative newcomer in the last couple of seasons to full-time World Cup sliding. Did go to the games in Vancouver in 2010, though. This is her first World Cup since Park City. We're 23rd and 24th. And 
last three or four events, she's been on the Europa Cup and ICC tours, the secondary tours that allows athletes to qualify through a point system. Not a bad start. Six best start. She's definitely improved her start. Yeah. Well, you know, when you come in, John, first of all, A, you're very young physically. Uh, it takes time to learn the ice, and of course, the athleticism has to come wherever you've come from. Guaranteed you won't have been an expert in sprinting with your fingertips uh, on the ground. She's not that tall of an athlete. She's very similar to like a Michelle Steele or a Sarah Reed. Sarah Reed might be a few more kilos than she is. But, uh, very noisy run though, and that means that she's ebbing away time. 17th going into yeah, quarter she's nine. Gone from 7 to 10 to 17. Oh, and she tapped her in the exit. Still at 17. She's still in the race at the moment. She's going to stay in the race. Not bad. This will be her best finish of the year. 17th, 17th place for Maria Mazulu. 9900s back. And so Aoka Nakayama, the oldest woman in the field, is not going to make the second heat. And Maria Mazulu of Romania will be in heat two. Let the fast 20 go in reverse order. Look at her head up. This is pivotal part of the track. We keep talking about it. Curve eight to nine. Now the exit, she's late. Look at her, look at the wall. I gotta stay off of that. And bang, and feed her up and out. And not a bad run though. She's a very bubbly individual, Maria, and she gets through into the second heat. 17 spots. But it is the woman at the top of the field that will go last in our 20 down to one reverse order second heat. Lizzie Arnold of Great Britain, our World Cup points leader, has been wearing the yellow jersey since Calgary in Canada and still leads the World Cup rankings from Noel Pikers Pace, who lies second in the race. Janine Flock of Austria and Yelena Nikitina of Russia, also in the top four, covered by 19 hundredths of a second. And it is from them that your likely medalists will come. But who can catch Lizzie Arnold? Is she heading to win number four? Well, there are the results. Clear break between Nikitina in fourth and Potilitsina and the chasing pack in fifth, sixth and on down. Tie for seventh with Shelley Rubberman and Michelle Steele. We also have a tie for 15 spots, Sophia Griebel and Rose McGrandall, two of the younger sliders in the field. And Nozomi Kamuro will be first on the ice. 20th after the first heat, she will go first in the reverse order, second heat. Aoka Nakayama will not get a slide. Melissa Hollings or Sarah Reed and Robin Thompson of Canada pulled from the race. Next time they're on ice will be in Sochi in Russia. Well, it's warm and we are hoping that as the temperature drops, the speed will come to the track for the athletes. It's not that bad, is it? Join John Morgan and me, Martin Haven, for the second heat coming up very shortly here live from Eagles in Austria.